Hey guys, welcome. Welcome to Artistic License, my stream on Thursdays where we do kind of whatever I want. I start in about 6.30 Eastern. Hi, Katie. Welcome. And hi, Jane. <laughs> Katie got the first this time. Um, and Jane wants to pretend that she's new to the stream. I understand, but like... <laughs> you even have an exclamation, Jane. You can't be new. You're not fooling anybody. <laughs> How are you guys doing today? Um, on the stream today, we're going to get back to uh, Final Fantasy X. We are going to be actually reaching Xanarkin to this stream, so that'll be interesting. Um, with all of the changes that I have been making to Spare Room and to Inner Stage Window and everything, one small change to Artistic License is we will still do kind of like this where I'm saying hi to you guys before we start the game. But um, we're not going to do the yesterday's episode spare room segment anymore because that show is going to move to every other week. So it just doesn't make sense to me to only be doing that every other week. It's kind of weird. So um, we're just not going to do that on the stream anymore. We're just going to talk for a little bit and then hop right into the game. Um, Karen's disappointing. A chick is terrifying. <laughs> wow, Jane. All right, Lunar, we can do pink. Do you want to do, um, do you want to do the light pink or the dark pink? Because I've got two inks yes of course i do so we can do let's see I've got this i've got this like hot pink right here and then i've got this like rose this like pale rose color which do you like the hot pink or the pale rose color the light pink okay we can do the light pink I like that one a lot too all right so if y'all watch the Discord or my Twitter, you probably saw. Um, this will be the last stream that has all of the kittens potentially featured on it. Oh my gosh! Cool Beans, thank you so much for resubbing. You've been subscribed for two months. That's amazing. That is amazing. I don't know why it didn't update the ticker, but um, in, it's, it updated the ticker in my heart. So thank you so much, Cool Beans. <laughs> You're the best. You're the best. Um, what was I saying? Oh yeah, I'll talk more about that when I get into the, the game, you know, when we have some breaks in there. But if anybody wants to do the baby cam, just know this is the last baby cam where we will have all of the kittens featured. Okay, with that being said, let's get into some Final Fantasies, y'all. Oh, Lunar already. Awesome. Okay, that's what everybody wants to see, so let's do it. Now, they've been doing a lot of running around on top of the bed, so that's why I put the camera up like that. So hopefully they'll do some of that while we're streaming because it's really freaking adorable. So I lifted the camera up so that y'all could see that. But it looks like right now most of them are under the bed. There's only one on top of the bed. But anyways, let's turn the volume up so we can actually hear the game. I feel like it's just, I feel like it's so loud. Hang on. I'm going to turn my computer sound down. I'm just looking at the levels to make sure. I think my voice is a little low. Turn that up. Okay. Do the levels sound okay for y'all? You'll hear just the music kind of lightly. And then me over it. It's probably fine. Okay. We're gonna get into the game. Yes. Okay. Alright, so we're still in the Mount Gagazette cave. There's a couple of things that we need to finish up here because we didn't get to finish it last stream and I realized also that I missed a chest. So um, we're going to go get that as well as do a couple of the other things. But first we're going to go up to this fork here and we're going to go right because there should be some chests over here. <laughs> yes. Yes, thank you so much Luna for the kitty cat cam. We love them, we love them. So here's what's gonna basically be happening in regards to the kitty cats. So we have, um, we basically at this point, the cats are all eight weeks old. They um, are all weaned. They really don't um, drink the milk anymore. They all eat cat food. <laughs> uh, also their moms do not help them go to the bathroom. They use the litter box at this point. And the truth is that I, just, I've never spent so much time and energy and money on litter and cat food in my freaking life. And at this point, I'm kind of just like, I cannot handle it. <laughs> uh, that's what's going on, really. I can't handle it. It's too much. 
Um, and the cats, they're, I mean, they're fine. They're like ready for home. So we are going to be working on getting them adopted out really soon, which I'll explain a little bit more in just a minute. Um, no, the camera is not higher to avoid the kung fu practice cats kicking it over. Although they, you know, as they're bigger, they are more rambunctious. But um, it's higher because they're, they're playing on top of the bed a lot. So if they do that, I want to capture it. So that's why it's, um, it's like that. But, uh, but they are knocking it over a lot more, knocking things over a lot more in there in general, which I'm sure the camera would be included um, today while it's in there. They still can knock it down. Like, they could yank it from the cord, and uh, it might fall. We'll see. <laughs> um, but yeah, basically, I, I, I've told some of you guys this, but I don't think I've actually said it on stream. But at this point, with the, oh gosh, 10 cats in that room, um, I am going in and changing the litter, no kidding, four times a day. That's how much they shit and piss. Like, it's insane. I, uh, <laughs> I cannot express to you the amount of time and energy I have spent on the changing the litter box. Um, <laughs> it's just, it's just a lot. So... At this point, basically, it's kind of like, um, I just, I can only do so much, and the kittens are ready, so we're going to get them homes. Um, so I know we've got somebody coming to get Midnight, which is the all-black one. We've got somebody coming to get, um, we've got someone coming to get the, uh, the Tuxedo Cat as well, so those two are going to get adopted. Um, also, we are keeping a couple of the kittens. So we're keeping the dragon one, the one we've been calling Dragon, and we are keeping um, the uh, the black and white one, which I've been calling Oreo, and I think that, well, Jeff picked that one out, right? But I think he wants to actually keep the name, so I think we're going to keep calling it Oreo. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see how that goes. Um, but uh, But we're really excited to keep them. Unfortunately, we've not been able to find homes for the, the two moms, which I am a little bit nervous about, since they're not kittens, you know what I mean? So, but, um, it's gonna be good, because we've got two that we're keeping and two that are adopted out, so that's only four kittens and then the two moms that, um, we'll still need to get homes for. So we'll take those guys to the SPCA and get that taken care of. Kendra will be happy. Yeah, where is Kendra tonight? Where is Kendra tonight? I know she's um still in the process of moving, so I'm sure that has something to do with that. But hopefully she'll come by later. And see what's up. <clears throat> but yeah, there's still there's still four of the kittens that um that aren't getting adopted unless somebody changes their mind very quickly. Um, and then there is the two moms that we're going to take to the SPCA. How'd you end up getting in the situation? Oh, -ho, irony. You have not heard the kitten story. Okay. We will fix that. So this is what ha happened <laughs> about, um, I guess, about a little over a year ago, which was like right before the pandemic started and everything shut down, right? There was um, a litter of kittens that came by the house and um, we would play with them and feed them, right? Like we have a lot of stray cats in our neighborhood. So we would play with them and feed them and all of that good stuff. And, um, and basically some of those cats moved on or passed away. I don't know, but they stopped coming around. But... Two of the cats, Coke and CJ, they kept coming around into their adulthood and like, you know, hanging out with us and seeing us and things like that. And um, we didn't really feed them as much, but we would still play with them. And sometimes we would feed them and that sort of stuff. Um, but basically, like we've, we've gotten to know these cats over the past like over a year. And then they decided in like March, sometime in March, I think it was. They decided that they were going to come into the house. Well, CJ decided she was going to come into the house. 
And then we were like, oh, well, this is so awesome. This was one of our favorite strays. We can go get her spayed. So what we did is using some Temptations kitty cat treats, <laughs> we tempted her sister Coke, the other one, into the house. So we got them both into the house, right? We are like, wonderful, this is awesome. We're gonna get them spayed. It's gonna be so good for them. It's gonna be awesome, great for the neighborhood, etc., etc. Okay, so before we can make it to the vet appointment to actually get them spayed, we all got COVID. Everybody in my house got COVID. I got it, my husband got it, my roommate got it. It was awful. Uh, my roommate actually had complications from it and ended up in the hospital for like two months. Um, it was ridiculous. Yeah, so, okay. So me and my husband didn't have COVID too, too bad. Like it wasn't that bad, but we were dealing with a lot of stuff with my roommate and we were still, you know, we still had it for two weeks, right? So we're dealing with all this stuff. And um, by the time that my husband and I recover, even though we're still dealing with a lot of stuff with our roommate and, and his COVID, um, you know, we're thinking like, okay, well, maybe we could get them spayed. But just kidding, because at that time we realized actually both of them are pregnant. <laughs> so we did not go get them spayed. And now we have Coke and CJ and eight kittens. <laughs> so that is what happened. <laughs> it was um, totally an accident. We had no intention of raising kittens. We literally were just going to go get Coke and CJ spayed. And then if they could get along with our cats, we would keep them. If they couldn't, then we wouldn't, you know because um, they had lived outdoors their whole life and everything, so it was just like, whatever. But, uh, but yeah, they were pregnant, so now there's a bunch of kittens. And um, we're not going to let Cook and CJ back outside. We're just going to go take them to the SPCA so they can find homes. I mean, they are beautiful cats. And, I mean, they're not, like, kittens, but they're not old or anything. So, you know, I feel like they should be able to get adopted. Kendra! Oh, thank you so much, Irony. Kendra, I don't know why your applause didn't play. Hang on, let me refresh the sound alerts. Okay, let me do that for you one more time. Where's the applause sound alert? Mm -hmm. I think I scrolled right past it. There it is. There we go, played that time. Kendra's so happy you could make it today. I thought for sure you must be busy or something. It's rare that you miss a Thursday stream. And I'm so sorry for what you found out about your internet. I don't know what's up with that. Um, if you don't want to talk about it, I'll shut up. But, uh, but I just feel really bad. Because, like, I totally hyped you up. And, um, then, yeah, you know. So I'm very sorry. Very sorry. Yeah, the kittens are very cute. So, hopefully, they will all end up with good homes. They're all good cats. So, they're all good cats. So, I know that if people do adopt them, they'll be happy with them. Let's end this. Yeah, Kendra doesn't have a command. I don't know why. She totally should get a command. But she's never redeemed one. Someday. Someday there'll be an exclamation Kendra for everyone to enjoy. But not today. <laughs> my dog was adopted from a shelter and I got a cat off of a farmer yeah those are the best ways to get animals adoption adopt don't shop I'm definitely a big believer in that 
Jane, you're going to make a Kendra command? <laughs> I can't believe it. I can't believe it. For this up here, we missed this chest up here, so I'm just going back to get it before we proceed on. Well, if Kendra's okay with it, I'm okay with it. But it's up to you guys. Kendra has to say she's okay with it, though. For someone else to do an exclamation Kendra instead of her, you know? Yeah, Irony, I, I definitely believe in Adopt, Don't Shop. I feel like, you know, there's so many animals that need homes. And it's better to adopt them than to, you know, buy specific animals. I mean, I don't... I don't begrudge anyone that chooses the shop, like, I don't- I'm not gonna, like, hate on you or anything, if that's what you chose, but, um, it's not for me, and I do think that, you know, you should consider adopting, because there are, like, purebred and animals and, you know, all sorts of things in, uh, in shelters, too. Whoa! Thank you so much for the raid, Wabs. I assume this means you made it to Philly. How was- how was Philadelphia? For y'all that don't know, Wabs, um, on his stream today, was doing more flight sim. And he- he flies, like, all over the world, and today he was landing in Philly. Oh no. That's not good. Riku, come back to life. <clears throat> in West Philadelphia, born and raised, the playground was where I spent most of my days. You crashed! <gasps> Wabs, you crashed! <laughs> you did not! <gasps> oh my god! Holy crap, am I about to get a game over? I'm about to get a game over. Oh my god! Why do I always get a game over on trash when I'm just like chilling, not paying attention? Okay, come on. <laughs> we don't have to redo everything because I did save um, before, after I got those two things, but we gotta do that one little leg again. I only die to trash and Seymour. <laughs> trash and Seymour, that's it. Yeah, rip your passengers, Wabs. Just bad and tired and a little tipsy. Oh, uh, understandable. Understandable. I mean, what are you gonna do? After you've had so many beers, like, it's really hard to land a plane. You know, I couldn't do it. So, don't blame you. And it's very late for you right now. Like, way past your bedtime, I'm sure. <clears throat> Alright, so it's just this little part that we have to redo. And then we'll be right back where we were. Yeah, he did have his captain shirt on. I saw it. It was awesome. I love how um, Babs' different streams come with uh, costumes, whereas all of my streams come with the same costume. Sparkly cat girl. Yeah, it's not his fault he took the lives of his passengers into his own hands while drinking. It's not! I mean, what do you expect with that? He really cannot be blamed. You know? I don't blame you, Wabs. Sometimes, you know, you gotta do what you gotta do. We can't help our vices. Aw, oh, thank you, Irony. I try. <laughs> exactly, Katie. Wabs has to stay hydrated. Oh my god, why is this thing taking forever to die? Come on, Waka. Give me the... Give me the stone smash. Dang it, what's wrong with you? Not what you were supposed to do! Okay, we will hydrate. Thank you so much, Irony. God, I actually took all of his AP and HP instead of smashing him. That was crazy. Oh, I forgot to check what this did after I got it. I think it's a... I think it's a Riku weapon? No? Armor? Hmm. Let's do this. Let's go. Hmm?
Pep Talk, where are you? Oh no. Oh, that's what it is. Okay. SOS Nulls. We don't need that. <laughs> yeah, definitely smash on uh, on those guys. I think we've seen them a couple times and said smash. I think last time we basically said this guy had weird hands and that's what was preventing a lot of people from saying smash on the behemoth. But, um, but I'm definitely here for smash. He's okay if he has weird hands. It's just, it's not his fault that they try to like animate him to where he can do like two legs and four legs. Like no one should have attempted that. They should have just said, you know, he's bipedal and that's how he is. And we're not going to worry about how he looks when he runs on four legs. A few months ago, I saw you doing tarot on stream. It was one of the first times I tuned into your stream. Oh, but anyways, that stream finally convinced me to get the deck off of Etsy, and I'm in love with it. Oh my gosh, Irony, I'm so happy for you. Yeah, um, I I really enjoy doing uh doing tarot, and um, it really helps me. I think so. I use it a lot for like you know a meditation aid and things like that to kind of like help. It helps, like, because it gives you something specific to think about, so I feel like it kind of gets, like, the thoughts unstuck. You know what I mean? So that's the main thing that I use it for personally. But um, but I like doing it on stream as well as kind of good practice uh, for you guys. So if you ever have a question that you want to know what my uh, Kawaii Tarot deck right here would think, just um, use the channel point redeem and ask me, and I will I will ask it, and we'll see what it says. Yeah, I struggled for so long to learn how to, like, meditate properly. Um, I was raised Christian, right? So I always, like, you know, had prayer and stuff like that. But when there was nothing specific behind it, um, I found it really difficult. So I found it really difficult to, like, just meditate. And I really had to teach myself. And, uh, and things like tarot have made that a lot easier for me. And now I have, like, specific things I can do, and it makes it possible for me. But I can't just sit there and let my wa mind wander. That doesn't... That doesn't do anything. <laughs> At least, not the things that I want meditation to do, put it that way. It does things, just not... Just not that. <laughs> <clears throat> Stop killing my peeps. Oh my god. I was raised Catholic, so I get it, yeah. Yeah, I was raised Methodist, which um, anybody, if you're familiar with the Methodist church, you know it's kind of like, it's Catholic light. Um, it's all, all the Catholicism, but without some of the, you know, there's no like sin, sin confessions, there's no like hope or anything, you know, so there's a few big differences, but it's very ritualized, just like Catholicism is. We still have like confirmation ceremonies and things like that. Oh, good night, Wabs. I was so happy to have the raid and happy to have you here for a little bit, but you definitely deserve some sleep, so go get some of that good, good sleep. I don't know how some of y'all over in the UK stay up so late to stream so late for us Americans. Like, I'm always shocked when I check Twitch and it's like after dinner time for me and I see like some of my UK friends still streaming. It's like, what? Holy crap. I cannot believe. Because Lord knows I do not do that. Oh, yes. Whoa, thank you so much for the raid, SGT Baker. SGT Baker, who are you? You are new? to my stream, I think. Oh my god, thank you so much. Lightning Cog, I do know you. I've, you've been in my streams before, but it's been a while. How have you been? Yeah, exactly, Irony. I'm just like so shocked anytime I see my UK friends still streaming. Lightning Cog, it's been a while, um, but I do I do know you. I think I f we follow each other on Twitter. Um, so I think that's where I've seen you more recently. But, uh, but I know you had come into a couple streams before. Missed ya, but happy to have you back. Yes, who are you, SGT Baker? I don't think I know you. If I do know you, then I'm very sorry. I forgot. Oh, Cog guided us here. Oh, wonderful. Oh, thank you so much, Cog. I really appreciate that. Always happy to have new people here on the stream. I have to tell you guys, though, we're at the beginning of the end of Final Fantasy X. So, if y'all have never played this game before... Um, we're probably going to see some real spoilery stuff tonight, but I hope this inspires you to play this game because it is one of my absolute all-time favorites. Um, I think the story is masterful. I think the characters are like none other. 
Yeah, big wow. <laughs> um, I think the characters are like none other. You know, characters are usually pretty good in a Final Fantasy game, but just in this game, they're just particularly spectacular. Baker's an old man on their way to a birthday party. Oh, we'll tell the um, birthday boy or girl, whoever, <laughs> that I said happy birthday. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thanks for that whistle, Irony. Don't kill Waka, he's got to shatter you. Um, Kendra, I think you're a mod in the stream. If you could exclamation SO, so give, do a shout out for SGT Baker and um, everybody go check out his stream since he is nice enough to raid into us even though he doesn't know me. It should be exclamation SO and then just put in his name. Oh, thank you for the biddies, Katie. I appreciate that. Actually, I think non-mods can do it too. Um, Katie, if you're paying attention to me, I think you can do the shout out as well and it should still work. I think. Oh my gosh, stop killing my peeps. All right. <clears throat> Go. T.T. Baker. There we go, there's the shout out. Oh my gosh, thank you so much. Thank you so much for the subscribe, Irony. I really appreciate it. Oh, you're on two months. That's awesome. Uh, okay, yeah, I guess it is mod only. I'm sorry. I can't remember how I set that up. Let's see. I need to bed potion these guys. Um, where did he make the pain go away? Call that a perky set. <laughs> That's a special skill. The special skill. Oh, you're good. It didn't work anyway. I thought I had it set so that anyone could do it. I probably should because I really haven't had a problem with people doing shout outs that um, were, you know, inappropriate or anything. So I probably should just let anybody do it. It's a special skill. Put it on a resume. I will. I'll let my boss know. Um, that's an additional skill that we can use at work. She'll probably be happy to hear that. Maybe she'll give me a promotion. That'd be nice. Yeah. <laughs> Bosses always appreciate it when you talk about your titties at work. Alright, that was the backtrack, is this little path right here. So we'll be out of this in a minute, and then we will be done with this cave, and we can move on to the next... And a piece, inching ever closer to Xanarkand. So yeah, back to um, kitty cat talk. So as I told you guys, um, Jeff is probably keeping the name Oreo for the for that kitty cat for the black and white kitty cat. But yeah, he bonded with um, Oreo really well. Um, basically, this this cat, the one we're calling Oreo, looks a lot like. Uh, Jeff's old cat that passed away a, a long time ago so we uh, so I think that's why he was initially attracted to that one but he bonded with it really really well um, this Oreo is probably like the laziest one <laughs> of all of them so um, she kind of slept on him next to him and that's really all it took and then he was like yeah I want that cat so that's the one he's keeping. And then the one I chose is the one that Kendra originally coined Dragon. Since she has that little curly cue on her back and when she was a tiny little kitten, that curly cue basically looked like a little dragon coming out from her tail. It doesn't really look like that anymore. Now it kind of just looks like a curly cue because uh, she's bigger. <laughs> but I think that um, we're, I'm changing the name because to me those were all their baby names. They weren't their real names, right? So I'm changing her name to Ladybox. Uh, the uh, the dragon from EverQuest because I mean you'll hear my sound alerts I think I've told y'all before where they're from that was one of my first games that I was so super obsessed with you know in like high school around that time middle school I think actually is when I started playing I can't remember I'd have to count back somewhere around there um, I know I definitely played it through high school and uh, and so I think I'm gonna name her Lady Vox and I think that also matches you know because my other cat's name is Queen so we've got Queen and we've got Lady Vox, you know, the queen and um, and the 
dragon name. So I appreciate Kendra for saying that her markings looked like a dragon and kind of inspiring that because I wanted to keep the dragon theme going. We looked through a lot of different dragon names, but a lot of them were just far too extravagant. You know, not really what I was interested in. But um, I think Lady Vox is good because the reference, as far as the dragon goes, is pretty obscure. Like, I mean, who in uh, 2021 is going to think of a Remember EverQuest? <laughs> you know, that's a pretty niche game from a long time ago. And also, I think Vox is just, it's a good name because it's like, you know, the Latin word for voice. So it has some kind of meaning in it, too, that's not just, you know, the reference that I'm making. So it's good. I think it's a good name for the kitty cat. And it's one syllable. I do like single syllable cat names whenever possible. Yeah, it's bedtime for the kitty cats. So they're sleeping. They're sleeping. Yeah, it's a very old game, Katie. Um, I don't think most people would be familiar with it. You had to have been playing MMOs before MMOs were really even popular, you know, for to be interested in EverQuest. It was like one of the very first ones that actually got kind of popular. But I wasted a stupid amount of hours on that game. Like, it definitely, it defined a huge section of my life. Playing that game. <clears throat> and I was playing it since the beginning, so like, I was playing it back when... To travel, like, before Planes of Power. So I was playing it back when, to travel, you had to, like, get on a boat and stuff like that, or find somebody nice enough to teleport you. <laughs> um, so, yeah. It was, uh, it was, it was quite the experience. It was quite the experience for me. I think Lady Vox is going to be what we go with. That is, hopefully, if, um, if Levi doesn't come up with a better idea... But I'm pretty sold on Vox, so I don't think he will. Yeah, Jane, did you play EverQuest? Back in the day. In like 1999, 2000, around there. It was like early, early 2000s, I want to say. It came out in like 98 or 99 or something like that. Long, long time ago. You've watched a lot of EverQuest. Did people stream EverQuest? I don't understand this statement, Jane. I apologize. I'm confused. Because, <laughs> I mean, that game was, like, popular before. Oh, you'd sit at your friend's house and watch him play. Oh, old school streaming. Old school stream viewers. I understand. Okay, I used to do that kind of thing, too. Before streaming was a thing. You know. That's how we used to watch people play video games. Live. <laughs> Live as fuck streaming. Exactly. Exactly. <clears throat> used to do that all the time. Category IRL. Exactly. Exactly, Cog. <laughs> yep. That was a big thing, you know, I mean, back in the day, you had, like, the family computer, right? So, whoever was playing, everybody else, if you were interested, you just basically had to watch. There was no, like, you know, everybody had their own computer and things like that. Not at that time. Alright. We're in a sphere grid before we move on, since we're right by a save point. I've always been really bad at games, so I find watching them way more fun. I'd never be able to see all the cool stuff otherwise. I totally feel you on that, because I feel the exact same way when it comes to horror games. I mean, y'all saw. Y'all saw my sad, pitiful attempt at playing a scary game one time on stream, and I'll never, ever do that again. I literally can't. Like, it's just not within my skill set, you know? <laughs> so, um, when it comes to, like, scary games, like, I, I love them. Like, I like watching them. You know, I think they're really interesting. But I just cannot actually play them myself. It's just not something I can do. I just get, I get like really in my head. I start like feeling bad for the characters in a way that doesn't happen for like 
you know, exciting games or sad games, you know? <laughs> um, like, I just get, I get scared for them in a way that doesn't happen any other time. Oh, oh my god, I voted yes on that Twitter poll. I saw it right before I went live and I voted yes, I'm not gonna lie. I was watching a little bit of your, um, your Resident Evil stream where you had the cosplay and stuff. Um, but I gotta be honest, like, I was busy at that time, so I had it muted, so I was just watching visually. And, um, I don't know, I thought you looked like you were having fun, but I guess not. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, Kendra, thank you so much. Um, appreciate all of our lurkers here. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, Irony. <laughs> I was having fun. I was just full of anxiety. Yeah. Um, for some reason, like, the anxiety... The anxiety of a horror game is so much more visceral than any other horror medium. You know, like, I can watch a scary movie, and so long as it's not, like, too gory, I really don't get that disturbed. Um, I can read a scary book. That's no problem. Uh, I don't really have any issues with that. But games, like, just, I guess because you're controlling part of it, I don't know, but it, like, it gets me. Like, nothing else does. Like, ridiculous. Like, I can't handle it. Um, yeah. <laughs> There's a VOD of my Halloween stream from last year where I thought it would be cool to play a horror game that my husband recommended. And it was too scary. It was, like, way too scary. <laughs> I couldn't do it. Yeah, the agency involved, exactly. Something about the agency in it, I just, it just like, really messes with me. To where I just cannot, I just cannot do it. It jacks my shit up. And I just get like, you know, I get too anxious and then I just can't play. And of course, like, streaming it made that even harder because I'm trying to think about, like, making sure that I'm being entertaining and interesting and, like, that I don't zone out um, at the same time. So, of course, like, not zoning out <laughs> means that, like, I'm really connected to what's going on more so than I might be if I'm playing by myself. That so was, like, all extra awful. <laughs> uh... <laughs> Oh no, I want to armor break him next. I'm a very big chicken. I'll only do scary things with people who allow me to scream and cry on them without judgment. <laughs> uh, I definitely understand that, Katie. I definitely understand that. You know what I really do love? I really do love haunted houses. But um, I would never go through a haunted house by myself because a part of the fun of the haunted house is like when you freak out and you grab your friend or your spouse or whoever and uh and then they laugh and like it really amuses them <laughs> so you know um yes you have to let me grab onto you and scream if we're going to do a haunted house together but that's also part of the fun of it you know it's not controllable it's really not it's really not controllable i 100 percent agree it's a pretty say is that edible no, Riku, it's not edible. Um, yeah, it's not controllable. <laughs> I wish. But no. Oh my god, get to Aran's turn so I can armor break it. Then we can do some damage. Bees flare, that's annoying. All right, come on, Yuna. You need to heal him. Heal us. I'm a big wimp, I know. All though, I was really tough this whole time. I thought, oh, I thought I was really tough this whole time. <laughs> uh, I don't mind laughing at me, but I'll end a friendship with someone who pushes me into things or tries to scare me more. Oh my god, yeah, no. No, 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 no. That's, uh, yeah, can't handle that. Uh, I agree with you. <laughs> I totally agree with you there. We're on the same page, Katie. <clears throat> oh, I need to switch back to a melee person. Is Kimari gone yet? Yes, I can get him to do an attack. Gosh, he's still... 
I gotta dip, but I'll leave you lurking. Have a lovely rest of stream, Karen. Ah, oh, thank you so much, Irony. I appreciate you leaving the stream on. I'll make sure that um, that when I raid, it's another Den member, so that hopefully they'll keep it going and you can wake up to some Den stream when you come back to the computer the next day. Oh, I thought you were tough, and it makes me feel better that you're a weenie too, Jane. <laughs> I don't know. I think Jane's pretty tough too. I mean, you know, I just think it's just when it comes to video games, probably she's a weenie. In horror media, maybe. But anyone that deals with kiddos for their profession is a is a strong to me. Oh, just to shower and cook. Yeah, I guess I wasn't even thinking about what time zone you're in, Irony. I have no idea. They'll be upon us soon. She has sent fiends to test our summoner's strength. Who is she? Unaleska. What? Lady Unaleska. In Zanarkin, she awaits the arrival of the strongest. She is still alive? As much as Micah and Seymour. I see. <clears throat> Lost your nerve? No. Nothing frightens me now. <laughs> Braska would be proud. Then, I must not let him down. The Lady Unaleska that we saw in that scene so many episodes ago when we were in Guado Salam. She's unsent. That's crazy. There's a lot of dead people in Spira that just keep hanging on. Can't kill him. I definitely want to go down there and get double cast. Looks like it takes level 3 and 4 to unlock it. Hopefully I have some of those? I don't know. <clears throat> okay, spear grid done. Get that save point right up there. Oh, another battle. We're gonna flee this one. Just get to that save point. Dan, I can't believe you're, you don't want to see something too sad. I don't know, that's my bread and butter. Like, if it's sad, like, I want it. Like, give me the sadness. Like, that's the whole, that's the whole, like, role-playing thing for me. Oh my god, stop sending me battles, I'm done with those. Exactly. Exclamation Landon, that's why me and her get along. <laughs> Oh, oh, big boy. Okay. So this guy is super freaking annoying. He'll, like, do this, like, he'll cast Reflect so he can bounce things all around. I freaking hate him. He doesn't have a lot of HP, though. So we're going to do the ch a cheatery thing with Riku. So I should be able to have, I should have, I'm looking for an MP sphere. I'm pretty sure I have one. Yeah, an MP sphere and then a musk should be down here. Yeah, okay. And this is gonna really mess him up. There we go, now he's got all these status effects. He took off a lot of health. So that's fabulous. And then we should be able to kill him pretty quickly. I can read sad and scary a lot more easily for some reason. I can... Read things I would never watch. Okay, yeah, I mean, I think that's fair. Reading is definitely the easiest of all things. Oh, no, he's cursed, so he can't do his thing. Okay, who can we get in here? Let's get Yuna. And then... Okay, he's got another turn, but he just did Photon Wings. He's probably not going to curse her. Oh, but he'll get another turn before she gets her next turn. Okay, we're going to go ahead and Grand Summon. I love his wings and his look. Yeah, this monster looks really cool. This is a really cool boss. I'm going to try to kill him fast enough to where y'all actually don't see all of his mechanics, because if he actually gets to execute all of his mechanics, 
He is very, very annoying, and the fight can last forever. And I want to make it to Xanarkin. But, like, you can end up going just in circles on this fight. Just going in circles and going in circles. It's awful. And as you saw, he curses. And what curse does is makes it so you can't do your overdrive. Which is a no -ing. I'm not even going to, like, bother making sure everyone gets a turn or anything like that. I'm just going to try to kill him as fast as possible. He actually has decent AI. And uh, regardless of his low amount of health, he can last forever. And I don't want to be fighting this battle for that long. <clears throat> you can see, like, he'll, he protected himself, right? And he's a Sunaing. Like, he does, he does all the things. <laughs> like, uh, like a player would. It's crazy. Though it's not, it's, he's not hard, but if you're not expecting it, um, he can be really annoying. But because he has low HP, if you just kill him fast, then you can be good to go. But he'll actually, like, heal himself and stuff. Sometimes. There we go. Now he's dead. I want to snuggle both of those dragonoids. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Aesthetically, even, they look really good together, right? The Sanctuary Keeper and Bahamut are floofy that's not floofy. Totally. I definitely agree with you, Katie. Hey, can't we rest a little? No need. We reach the summit soon. I know. That's why I want to stop for a bit. Soon means that there's not much time left. Riku. Fine. I'll think on the way. I don't think she wants you saving her. Hey, come on, let's go. We are. We're almost there, aren't we? We've come a long way. <laughs> What's so funny? You remind me of myself. Hmm? Before, the closer I came to Xanarkin, the more I wondered. When we arrive, Brasco will call the final Aeon. He will fight Sin, then die. I thought my mind was made up long before. But when I stood here, my resolve wavered. Hmm. Never would have figured. Legendary Guardians choke sometimes too, yeah? <laughs> legendary Guardian? I was just a boy. He wasn't a legendary boy about then. Your age, actually. I wanted to change the world too. But I changed nothing. That is my story. That's so sad. Poor Aaron. Wow, there it is. A city dead for a thousand years. A city I had to see with my own eyes. The end of Yuna's journey. The last chapter in my story. My thoughts, they kept floating up and then slipping through my fingers. Slipping away before I could pin them down with words. Yuna, I say no. If we go down there, then you'll... Riku. You're a true friend, and I thank you, but I must go. 
down to Sanarkand. This is so sad. I'm not saying we shouldn't go. But should we think about it some more? There's gotta be some kind of way we can save you, Yuna! All my life, I knew this moment would come. Yuni! <sighs> Thank you, Riku. Thank you for everything. Don't say that, Yuni. It's not over yet. Tell Sid. Thank you. No. You can tell him yourself. Say that because we're gonna see each other again, okay? Jamari, let's go. Sir Oren, Kimari told me, when my father wanted me taken from Bavel to Besaid, it was you who told Kimari, right? I had always wanted to meet you someday. I am truly glad that I had that chance. Having you as a guardian was so great an honor. I don't know how to thank you. Perhaps if I defeat Sin, that will be my thanks to you. That's what I'll do. Yes. I will challenge Sin. I will defeat Sin. If you are all there watching this, then I guess Sin is already gone. And so am I. I suppose. So sad. Anyway, I just wanted to say, Sir Oren, I thank you. Kimari, <laughs> do you remember the first day we met? I was only seven. My father had defeated Sin, and all Pavel was celebrating. Everyone was saying what a hero my father was. I was so happy. But when night came, it occurred to me. My father had defeated Sin, and now... He was dead. Now, I was all alone. I couldn't sleep. So I wandered into the town, away from the celebrating crowds. I stood on the bridge in Bavel, where my father and I had parted. Standing there, alone, I could see the fields where he had fought Sin. Then, you appeared, Kamari. You said you were looking for the daughter of Braska, remember? At first, I was so scared. Until I realized what a gentle person you are. <laughs> you weren't used to talking to children. When I told you that I was Braska's daughter, you said you would take me as far from Bavel as you could. That it was the wish of a man facing death. I think I cried then because that, that was when I knew my father was dead and I would never see him again. You just held me without saying a word. I cried after we got to be saved too. When you tried to go, after leaving me in the care of the temple, I held on to you crying, don't go, don't go. And you listened, Kimari. You stayed. Kimari, thank you. Thank you so much. That's really why Kimari never went and back to Mount Gagazet. your broken horn. Waka, Lulu. 
I'll never forget my days spent with you, growing up in Besaid. We always played together, us and Chapu. That's why I was always so happy, I think. And when you refused to let me become a summoner, and I did it anyway, I'm sorry. I've always wanted to apologize. You know, when you tried to stop me then, really, I was happy. I could tell you really cared about me. You were like my big brother and sister. No, I think you really were my big brother and sister. <sighs> what else? <laughs> I love watching you play Blitzball, Waka. <laughs> I even love it when you scold me, Lulu. <laughs> Really? I guess that leaves the newest guardian. Star player of the Xanarkand Abes. You are... I am... Well, um... I'm glad... I'm glad that we met. We haven't even known each other that long. So this is what it feels like. It's a much more wonderful feeling than anything I had ever imagined. Wonderful. But it hurts sometimes. Hmm. Hmm. I wonder. I... <laughs> I just want to say thank you for everything. <laughs> Maybe... Maybe that's why it hurts. When I... When I think about us never being together again at all... I'm afraid. No, I shouldn't say that. I'll do that part over. What you up to? Oh, she never went back and redid it. So we weren't supposed to get that message until after, but we got it now. It's so sad. Oh, that part, that scenes really gets me too. We're about to get up close a little bit to those ruins that we just saw and then walk down there. Looks totally different than the Xanarkin from the beginning of the game that Titus is from. The dream Xanarkin. The real one is so much more desolate. You can really see what happened a thousand years ago with the Machina War. Yeah, it's sad! We know this scene. We saw this at the very beginning. So this should look familiar.
listen to my story. This may be our last chance. Hey, there was more, right? I mean, like that time... Uh, anyone? I think... Yes? I think that we should stop. Maybe. For now. I am actually going to switch back to Brotherhood for Titus. I feel like that's like his sword, you know. You can do those quick ones on the sphere grid that I just got. And we'll save and start fighting monsters in Xanarkand. Yeah, Katie, it's real sad. This game is really sad. But, you know, I like sad things, so. <laughs> so I think it's a really good game. But imagine, like, I was in high school when I first played this, like, when this game first came out. And, like, it just, it just freaking blew my teenage mind. This is going to be more like pretty difficult monsters just like we've had in the past couple of sections where we'll actually have to use our skills and stuff to make sure we defeat them. And a lot of similar monsters. <clears throat> oh no, why did an exclamation land and go off? The bot was working earlier, we were doing lots of the um, commands. Well, we know what you mean. It's in spirit. <laughs> Exclamation land and in spirit. <laughs> Since the bot wants to be rude. This is another part of the game where it, um, it plays the music of the area instead of playing the um the battle music and then you know it's like something important is going on when that happens and i just love the music here it's like it's so like both sad and triumphant at the same time which is exactly what's happening in the game right now like it's really sad what's about to happen but also the result of it means that Spira is going to have some time without sin where they can relax and just, you know, be people without having to worry about, like, random wanton destruction. I would 100% smash this boss. This is a regular enemy. The Dark Land's a regular enemy, but yeah, absolutely 100% smash. Oh, and here's our Ochus. We love these. We usually vote smash on these guys. <laughs> remember when we had like the first one that we fought the first one enemy kind of like this that we fought back on like close to the moon flow and it was like really hard and annoying <laughs> and now they are regular enemies that you just encounter in a random battle It's crazy how far we've come. And how much the characters have grown and... Ah, oh, shoot, that's right, because he's got Brotherhood. He's going to heal those guys. Water damage heals them. This ends now. Not quite, almost. 
maybe now. It ends. There we go. So yeah, like, it's just, it's crazy. And it's still gonna be um, several more streams, or a few more streams at least, of playing this game before we finally totally beat it. But, um, it's just insane how far we've come. Oh no, you're the boss! Well, that's right. Well, that's what we're trying to prevent. We're trying to prevent having to call the final Aeon and become Sin, right? That's the goal. So we'll see if we can do it. Or we'll see if, you know, we succumb to the same thing that happened to all other summoners and their guardians before us. Where they became Sin and the summoner died. But we'll see. We'll see if we can do it. I don't know. We'll find out together. I do actually know, of course, I've played this game like six times, but y'all know. No spoilers. No spoilers if you know. For those of us that don't. But there's been so many, like, paths in this game that we go along... But now we're going al along a really broken one. Looks like the far plane. Close enough. I could just like pause the game and just listen to this song. Just play in the background looping over and over. It's so good. Such a good song. Now that she has that, that buff on her weapon, she does, like, such amazing damage. Ulu is literally a bomb. Oh, don't punch me. That's rude. Alright, Titus needs to go, I think. I can't remember if Kimari went, so I'll pull him in again. <clears throat> then maybe Walker will smash it. Don't punch me! Hush! Okay, we're gonna bring Lulu in one more time so she can... Hopefully this will kill it. This punch is hurt! There we go. them back up and we can keep going there's a couple of chests along here so we'll pick these up as we go uh thank you for the lurk jane i guess the bot just like totally went down because it's it's not doing that either anyways we appreciate all of our lurkers here happy to have you staying and lurking Denied. Jane is not allowed to lurk. No, you're still allowed to lurk. It's fine. <laughs> I don't know why the bot decided to stop working in the middle of the stream. That's a little bit weird. The fates have spoken. Looks like the kitty cats are all asleep at this point. Having their bedtime. I see like one crawling around, I think. Towards the bottom of the screen.
So yeah, we're keeping two of the kitty cats. I'm pretty excited about that. Happy to welcome them into the house. We've been keep taking them out a lot in the evening so they can interact with Ree and with Queen and with Ash. And um, Queen was a little perturbed at first, I assume, because they smelled, you know, just like <laughs> Coke, who had picked so many fights with her. But um, uh, it didn't take too long. And um, she's doing pretty good now. So no real super concerns there. I do wish we could, you know, let them all out of the room. But Coke cannot be left out of the room because she goes and picks fights with Queen and Ash. So, you know, can't do all that. But I'm trying a couple of things like you know, with people that I know that actually live in my area of trying to get them to come and um, adopt some of the more of the cats so that we don't have to take as many of them to the shelter. But if we can't, we'll take them all to the shelter during my four day freaking weekend. Only have one more day I have to work tomorrow and then get four days off. Oh my God, these dudes are destroying me. Stop killing me. There we go. Got one down. Alright, Riku, come do your Healy Healies. We like the Albed potion. Alright. I love how it sounds whenever they're like doing their doing the spells and hitting the monsters and things like when the music swells up like that. It sounds so cool to me. Yeah, we're getting it. Like we're doing something here, guys. Poor Lulu. Lulu's been on so many other pilgrimages before, and this is her first, like, successful one. And it's so sad what happens when you actually have a successful one. It's like, ah! Alright, we're gonna pause here and do Sphere Grid and then save before going inside that building. That building looked suspiciously. <gasps> like, do I want this? What is this? Oh, zombie attack. Yes, I definitely want that. That building looks suspiciously like a um, Blitzball Arena. So that's interesting. Very similar to the Blitzball Arena that Titus had walked out of at the very beginning of the game. So, obviously it's no longer a Blitzball Arena, but what is it now? We are going to find out. Oh, I can see. Okay, I don't have any level 3 key spheres. I wonder where I can get some. I really want to get that double cast for Lulu, but if she doesn't have any, if we don't have any level 3 key spheres, then we cannot. Not at the bottom here. Nope. I think that's what she needed, a 3 and a 4. I don't know, let's cycle back to her and double check. Maybe it's not that. Yeah, it's a three and a four, but I don't have a three. Hmm. Backseating allowed, what's that? Oh, that means if somebody has like um like a tip for the game, like, oh, do this, it makes this easy or whatever, they're welcome to tell me. Like, I put that on there because I do want the stream to be no spoilers for like the story, but I don't mind if people want to give spoilers for like you know, ways that you can defeat bosses or, you know, fun facts or things like that. Journeyer of the long road, name yourself. I am the summoner Yuna. I have come from the island of Besaid. Your eyes, my dear, show me the long road you have traveled. 
Very good. You have journeyed well. Lady Unaleska will surely welcome your arrival. Go to her now, and bring your guardians with you. Go. Yes. Uh-oh, the music just got more intense. Yeah, so it's just helping people know, like, I don't want spoilers, but that doesn't mean you can't say anything about the game. If it might benefit the future of Spira, I will gladly give my life. It is the highest honor for which a guardian might ask. Use my life, Lady Yoken, and rid Spira of sin. Predecessors. She said Lady Yoken, didn't she? Wait, she guarded High Summoner Yoken? This dome is filled with fireflies. It's like one gigantic sphere. People's mm. thoughts remain here forever. Fireflies can do anything. More broken path. Even inside here. He's yelling annoying. You uh I wanna do the fire breath. He'll get his overdrive back up in time, it'll be fine. This is creepy. So basically these guys are zombies and they can inflict zombification on you too. <laughs> so that's fun. So Yuna can come in here and kill them with like basically casting cure. Like that's something you can do too if you want to um, in this little section when you have these guys. So these are basically like, I think they're supposed to represent like dead soldiers and dead guardians that didn't make it. Because they look just like the um, people from Bavel when we fought those on the way to Seymour. And as we learned before, Thanarkand and Bavel had a big old war between them using Machina. This is representative of that whole situation. Okay, these guys are annoying. We fought this guy as a boss <laughs> back in the calm lands, but now he is a regular enemy. <laughs> Just like many things that we fought along here. Eat that haymaker. My god. So annoying. And we'll just like destroy you. Go ahead and provoke him. Hey you, take me on. Just like we did that boss. Alright, Luli needs to go and Kimari and Waka, I'm pretty sure. us back out since he has the provoke on. God, he has so much HP. Let's actually... Oh, we'll keep him out. We did a power break already. Let's also do an armor break. Mm. 
<clears throat> At least he got that darkness on him. That's nice. When he was boss version, he was immune to darkness. But we couldn't do that. Now we just take forever killing him. Because these guys, just like the boss counterpart, have a gajillion HPs. Oh no, rude. All right, come on, Yuna, get him back up. You know, some people do like no sphere grid runs of this game. And I really wonder like when they get to these parts of the game where like even the regular enemies that you fight can be kind of a challenge and you have to use your skills to really beat them. Like, how do they do it? They must, like, trick their weapons all out with, like, the, um, with that whole system where you can add skills and things to your weapons. Like, that must be how they do it. I don't see how otherwise you could possibly. He in front? Yeah, he's out of range. That's what I thought. There's those jump kick guys again. So if you miss Kimari's... Um, Ronso Rage before you could get it from these guys. And these look like Machina that you could just like steal from and dismantle like you can those others, but these ones that match the Bavel Machina you cannot just steal from. It does not work that way. But I wish. Alright, come back, Orin. Yeah, and they're immune to his chattering thing, too, which sucks. They should not be immune to that. My husband's like to play through normally and then play through and gradually increasing difficulty. Sometimes it's ridiculous. I don't understand how he enjoys it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I don't play like that. I mean, my favorite games are simulation games. Y'all know, so I prefer things that are um, much more low stakes. <laughs> Um, I'm not about that uh, hard mode life, you know. I do believe that all games should have an easy mode so that everyone can experience the game without having to stress themselves out. I mean, they're just video games. Um, they're just video games, so I just don't... I just don't think they gotta be all like that, you know. Now, I will say, when it comes to MMOs, like MMORPGs, when I was super into those, um, those I would, like, you know, beat my head against the wall trying to do the hard stuff. Um, but it was different because you were raiding with, like, a whole huge group of people. So there was a lot more motivation and interest in doing the hard stuff because you were kind of, like, all tackling it together as a group. But when, in single-player games like this, uh, no. <laughs> in single-player games, I just put things on easy mode because I really just want to experience the story and experience, you know, the mechanics at, at their basic level. I don't feel the need to um, experience the hardest thing the game has to offer, you know? Only with MMOs have I ever really done the stuff that's hard. Oh, that's Riku, not Yuna. Alright, come on, Kamari. Kill it! Aw, not yet. That's why my favorite games are things like Viva Pinata, Animal Crossing, Stardew Valley, you know, low stakes. <laughs> low stakes. And I think there's still a lot to be said for games like that. Every game doesn't have to be Dark Souls, you know. And I get that a lot of people like that, but there is there is more to gaming than just Dark Souls. And, uh, and things of similar ridiculous difficulty. I think. Oh no, that's where I just went up. Okay, so I can't get up there yet. I saw a chest, but I can't actually get up there. Ah, oh, no, I just fought. Let's get a little farther.
Oh, there's a save point. Okay. Let's do our spirit. I've been playing Stardew Valley since the last stream. It's a good game. It's so addicting, right? Like, it's so addicting. Um, it's a really good game. Oh, that's Flare. We're not gonna get that for Kimari. We're not gonna work. We'll do another, um... We'll do a future community day still on Stardew Valley at some point, Katie. Because I love it a lot. But at some point we'll do it again. What's this? Quick pockets. Let's, um, let's get into that. How many level 4 key spheres do I have? I have three. Okay, well, we'll go down there and get quick pockets for Yuna. And I do, I do like this, um, this new thing of having like monthly community days. So I hope those continue to work out. We can continue to do that and have some fun with that. All right, got him zombie attack. Awesome. <sighs> I want to go down there and get the double cast, but like we literally can't because we don't have a level three key sphere. We're going to have to just move back, get that for her later. Such a shame. Did we win? <laughs> uh, not yet, Jane. We went into the dome, um, which clearly used to be the Blitzball area. So that's where we are right now. I think, do I walk up here to get that chest? Not quite time to switch to Pokemon. Let's see if I can just level up a little bit more. Do that for the rest of the stream. Blitzball like from the very beginning. Yes, we are inside an, the old Xanarkin Blitzball Stadium. From the very beginning, only it's the real one in Spira instead of the dream one that, um, that Titus is from. That's where we are right now. Fighting a whole bunch of dead and undead things. So be it. His Spira is the spiral of death. Yeah, this game is super deep, Jane. Like, that's why it's one of my favorites. Because <clears throat> it really is. Like, it touches on it touches on so many things, you know. Final Fantasy is an awesome game series, but this one in particular is really good. Who's that? Will the people accept you? I don't care about them! I need you, Mother! No one else! I don't have much time left. Hey, wasn't that... Seymour? It's Seymour when he tried to become High Summoner. So sad. Poor Seymour. But you know, he never did it. He never actually made it to um, becoming High Summoner and defeating Sin. 
but you can see that he tried and just how young he was when he did try. And we know that his mom's not around anymore. So. We'll find out a little bit more about that later. Mm-hmm. Yep, exactly. So you can kind of see why Seymour has become kind of obsessed with this idea. He couldn't become High Summoner, but what he can do is become Sin. Allow me. And in his mind, heal Spira by getting rid of Spira. He's lost everyone he loves at this point. Oh, there's that chest. Go grab it. Shoot. Need to heal. <laughs> if I fight one of those guys. Okay, let's... There we go. sphere. Okay, so what we're gonna do at this point is actually go back to this save sphere. Well, we'll fight this. We'll fight this guy, these guys first. We'll go back to that save sphere and save, and then I think we're gonna switch over to Pokemon and end the stream. This is a good spot. Got some intense stuff for next time. Fire is always better for them. Okay. Oh no, Lulu! Get back up, girl! Love that auto med. The best. Oh, I wanted Waka. That's right. Did Orin go yet? Oh, he's gonna kill that guy if he didn't. Sphere grid, one more time. So, on the next stream, we will continue. I have two level fours, so I only have one. Oh well. <clears throat> so on the next stream, we'll continue through the Xanarkin Dome. Up to Lady Unaleska. Yes, is what, what we learned, where we're going.
Let's save. All right. Let's do some Pokemon. Get Photoshop going. Okay, in addition to almost being done with Final Fantasy, we are almost done with the Pokemon meme, guys. All right, let me clear chat because it is in the way as always. There we go. Okay, so we're actually gonna do six Pokemon this time instead of the five because we're almost done. And that way we don't have like a short one that we're doing. So what we're gonna do this time is some third generation Pokemon. So what we're gonna look at first is gen three normal types. So I'm just setting this up and then I'll drag it over. Okay, go. Gen 3 normal types. Let's look at those. So our choices are Zigzagoon line, the Taylor line, Slackoth line, Wismer line, um, the Azuril, uh, Skitty line, Spinda, Swablu, Zangoose, Castform, and Kecleon. So, you know, I gotta go for my kitty cat Pokemon, and I like to go with Skitty for my Gen 3 normal type. So right here is a little pink cute cat. Aw, matches the ears that Lunar picked out for me today, so that's wonderful. So let's scroll down and read a little bit about Skitty. Skitty has the habit of becoming fascinated by moving objects and chasing them around. This Pokemon is known to chase after its own tail and become dizzy. Skitty is known to chase around playfully after its own tail. In the wild, this Pokemon lives in holes in the trees of the forests. It's very popular as a pet because of its adorable looks. Sounds just like the kittens that we have got in that room right now. And oh look, one is running around on the bed at the moment, messing with the laundry. That's lovely. <laughs> All right, so here we go. Let's pop them into place. So there we go, Gen 3 normal type, Skitty right there. Okay, the next one we're gonna look at is the Gen 3 flying types. All right, so our Gen 3 flying type choices are Beautifly, the Taylor line, Wingull line, Masquerain, Ninjask, the Swablu line, Tropius, Salamance, and Rayquaza is, of course, a legendary, so we're not counting that. So my favorite of these is our little cloud bird, Swellow. So, sorry, not cloud bird, our little fast bird, Swellow. Come here, there we go. This guy right here. So you know, normally I go for the the lower um, one. So normally I'd go for Taylo, but I really love the sleek design here of Swellow. So we're gonna scroll down and read about him. Swellow flies high above our heads, making graceful arcs in the sky. This Pokemon dives at a steep angle as soon as it spots its prey. The hapless prey is tightly grasped by Swellow's clawed feet, preventing escape. Swellow is very conscious about the upkeep of its glossy wings. Oh, conscientious, my bad. Once two swallow are gathered, they diligently take care of cleaning each other's wings. So that's very nice. Yeah, the baby version of the bird is nice on this one, but I just, I prefer, I prefer how sleek the adult looks. I just really like it. Yeah, he's got kind of a mad face. <laughs> All right, next, after flying, we're going to look at the ground ones. So where's ground? Right here. So ground types for Gen 3. We've got the Marsh Stomp line, we've got Nincada, the New Mel line, Trap Inch line, Barboach and Whizcash, Baltoy line, and Groudon, of course, is a legendary. Yeah, they're probably just playing really hard before bedtime, the kitty cats. Okay, so my choice for Gen 3 ground type is Whizcash, little the catfish Pokemon. Look at him. Very cool, right? Nice, cool blue. Pokemon. Okay, let's read about him. Whizcash is extremely territorial. Just one of these Pokemon will claim a large pond as its exclusive territory. If a foe approaches it, it thrashes about and triggers a massive earthquake. If Whizcash goes on a wild rampage, it sets off a quake-like tremor with a radius of over three miles. This Pokemon has the ability to predict real earthquakes. So that's a cool thing that he can do. All right, Let's go down to the ground types, Gen 3. Here we go. There's where he goes, right there. 
All right, next after ground, we're going to look at the rock types for Gen 3. He does have a Wario W on his head, yeah. <laughs> so for rock types, our choices are Nose Pass, the Aaron line, Lunatone and Soul Rock, the Lilip line, the Anorith line, and Relicanth. So out of those, what the one I really like is um here we go. Cradilly, I think is how you say it. I'm actually not sure how you say this Pokemon, but I think it's Cradilly. And I just I like the pink around it. I like how it's kind of like Venus flytrap looking. Um, I think that's really cool. So let's scroll down and read about him. Cradilly roams around the ocean floor in search of food. This Pokemon freely extends its tree trunk like neck and captures unwary prey using its eight tentacles. Cradilly's body serves as an anchor, preventing it from being washed away in rough seas. This Pokemon secretes a strong digestive fluid from its tentacles. So it is a ocean tentacle Pokemon, it's a rock type. Um, so I put that right there, right there in my Gen 3 rock types. All right, next, let's go look at our bug types for Gen 3. All right, so the bug type choices are Wormple line, cat, um, which includes Silicoon and Cascoon, Beautifly and Dustox. There's the Surskit line, the Ninja, Ninkata line. Uh, Volbeat and Illuminisi, and then the Anorith line. So my favorite for the bug types, I'm going to be like real basic here and go with Beautifly, the the other butterfly Pokemon. <laughs> uh, I like the butterfly Pokemon. I like this one and Vibrava and, um, and Butterfree. I like all the butterfly Pokemon. So Beautifly. Let's read about him. Beautifly's favorite food is the sweet pollen of flowers. If you want to see this Pokemon, just leave a potted flower by an open window. Beautifly is sure to come looking for pollen. Beautifly has a long mouth like a coiled needle, which is very convenient for collecting pollen from flowers. This Pokemon rides the spring winds as it flits around gathering pollen. So, there we go. That's where he goes, right there. And then lastly, because we're doing six today instead of the normal five, we are going to look at the psychic types for this generation. All right, our psychic choices, we have lots of them for this generation. We have the Ralts line, we have the Metatite line, the Spoink line, Lunatone and Soul Rock, the Ball Toy line, Chimicho, Why Not, the Beldum line, and then a whole bunch of legendaries, <laughs> which you know I don't count those. So the one that I like to go with, you'll probably thought I might have put this for my rock, but no, I put it on the psychic one. Uh, it's Lunatone, the, the moon Pokemon. So let me show you all what it looks like. It is literally a crescent moon. Like, look at that. That's so cool, right? So let's read about him. He's rock psychic. Lunatone was discovered at a location where a meteorite fell. As a result, some people theorize that this Pokemon came from space. However, no one has been able to prove this theory so far. Lunatone becomes active around the time of the full moon. Instead of walking, it moves by floating in midair using telekinesis. The Pokemon's intimidating red eyes cause all those who see it to become transfixed with fear. So that's a little creepy. I like to put that one right here in the Psychic Gen 3 spot, right there. All right, so that's how far we are on our Pokemon meme. We will do more of them next time. So that was that filled out Gen 3 quite a lot. We've only got a few more Gen 3 Pokemons to do. Um, so we'll do some more of these next time. All right. All right, guys, just a couple of things before we end stream today. Next time on Artistic License, we're going to be doing more Final Fantasy X. So we'll continue through that Xanarkin Dome and um, and kind of reach the next little area. So we're really, we're really getting closer and closer to the end of that game. Um, this section right here really is the end. And it's a Final Fantasy game, though. So even once you get to the end, it opens up. And side quest so we'll see exactly how much longer we play this game because even after the end it's not it's not the end i mean y'all know how role play games work the main story is not the whole thing <laughs> um on saturday for interstage window we're going to be talking about role play group rules so me and landon are going to be talking about rules that we like rules that we think are necessary rules that we don't like basically all of our tips and tricks in regards to role play group 
rules. And we're going to be playing some more Sims too. And remember, Landon is pregnant. So <laughs> uh, she might pop her baby on the next stream. You'll have to show, come up and uh, you'll have to come to the stream to find out. So that's going to be on Saturday at noon. All of these times are Eastern. Uh, as you know, also, I have my uh, YouTube show, which is Spare Room. Those go up at Wednesday at 2 p.m. every other Wednesday. So there will not be a new episode next week, but the week after there will be a new episode. And um, y'all know how this works. You guys know how to find me, how to support me, all the things. I'll put my socials in the chat. There you go. There's all of those. Um, I do everything the same as every other content creator does it. So y'all know how to use those. All right. So let's find somebody to raid before we end stream today. It looks like Alpha Tiff is doing Dragon Age 2. So I think let's raid her. She's been a good supporter here. And um, let's keep that role play energy going with some Dragon Age 2. Yeah, Jane, Dragon Age is definitely um, a Jane kind of game. I'm just going to pop in, make sure she's not like paused or anything. Got the advertisement. <sighs> Why are Twitch ads so long, y'all? Why are Twitch ads so long? It takes forever to get through the ad. There we go. Okay, no, she's not paused or anything. She's in the middle of the game. All right, here we go then. Let's rate Alpha Tiff. All right. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you on Saturday for Interstage Window. And if not then, then I'll see you on Thursday for my Final Fantasy X on Artistic License. All right. Bye, y'all. Have fun watching Dragon Age.